When did they first approach you about doing it? Uh, I guess it would have been February uh, 2020 as we were. So the movie Soul was, a, I was, this, you know, editing Soul still and Soul was supposed to be released in June. And that's about the time we start talking about these shorts, you know. And did you uh, have a hand in writing it or did you have a thought where you wanted to go with it? Um, kind of um, where, did, where, did, where did it take off? Um, so initially I was not part of the pitch process because I was busy on Soul. And at that time I wasn't necessarily going to direct it. Um, and then sort of, so a couple ideas were being kicked around and then we landed, by the time I came on, then we landed on this idea. Of, using, of doing a prequel to 22. And so from that, and then Josh Cooley was brought on to write it. Um, and he wrote the script and we started storyboarding and then we sort of finished it in parallel with Soul. Now in terms of 22, what intrigued you about that character? Because honestly, I think it's one of the best parts of Soul period because it's really representative of a lot of people in our world. Yeah, and as we were working on Soul, you know, we Joe Joe Gardner's the main character, so that's where we we spend a lot of time telling his story, and we get to meet his family, and we get to see his world. Twenty two, we pretty much pick up where we pick up the movie, and we had lots of conversations over the years as we're making the movie about how did twenty two get this way, and none of those belonged in the movie soul because they just narrative wise it you know we didn't need it at that time and so it seemed like a logical to make a short about 22 i really wanted to go back and start filling in those blanks you know like how did she become the person the soul she became why didn't she just stay the innocent little soul and jump to earth like all the other ones well i mean she's jaded i mean a lot yeah. just like a lot of people are jaded and yeah. She's not an evil person by any stretch. She's just, you know, she wants to be around others and people keep leaving her. And it's, right. it's really kind of emphasizes that whole thing that comes with soul about loss and the feeling of loss. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I, what I found so intriguing about um, 22. What was the toughest part in getting this all together? Um, the toughest part was actually the logistics, you know, we, we had done a storyboard pass and then COVID hit and we went into quarantine just as we were starting production. And so everybody had to go home, figure out their internet, figure out how to do this thing from home. And like you, they had kids, they were, you know, that suddenly weren't in daycare or school. And I just, you know, it was amazing how everybody came together and made this happen because there was just, you know, so much going on. Oh, you can see my son in the background trying to yeah. get into the uh, interview. <laughs> yeah, I apologize, I apologize, no, Kevin. Fine. That's, uh, um, one second. Um, finally, Tina, Tina, was Tina on board right away? Or did you have to yeah. sell her a little bit on doing this? No, she's so great. I mean, you know, um, it wasn't, there was no real issue with that. She just said, sure, you know, and she was at home when we recorded her. Fortunately, her husband has a recording studio in the apartment and, and she was like us, she was, you know, her daughter was home from school and she had to leave during, you know, during the session to go deal with little family things. So it was all very nice.